Hey guys, this is Game of Cow playing Toho, the genius of Sapphiros, and last time we basically had an overview of Satori and a very uncooperative enemy set trying to learn some skills, and this time we're going into Murinzuka to basically determine the, uh, well, the nature of the mist. To, I mean, it's been sort of affirmed that it's related to death and Yuko didn't work, so let's try the other thing that's sort of related to death, I guess. Uh, party going in, like I said before, Yomu is going to be the commander so she can get leveled up, hopefully in time to give her a good run in the next stage, kind of show what she's all about at that point, but uh, yeah, Satori, Saugyo, Sanai, uh, Satori's kind of the new addition here. She is very fragile, but then again, Marissa wasn't the sturdiest of characters either, so I think it'll be okay. And Satori should be able to put in a good bit of work, especially with the way that I've set up her accessories. So, yeah. This is probably one of my favorite songs of the game. Uh, if there's one which I'm gonna end up humming along to in my half time, then yeah, it's gonna be this. But it's this in the Forest of Magic one is really nice. But yeah, we need to basically search this entire place to find any potential clues. Yeah, it's a very weird place, this one. This is where the boundary in. Uh, the boundary to the real world is the thinnest, I believe. So. Yeah, humans and objects and stuff flow in from the outside to Gensokyo here. So... It's kind of weird. Yeah, so it's a it's a barrier place that... So basically this is where Renosuke and I guess Yukari as well go to get all this stuff. And of course Natori would like to be here too, but... You don't really want to be dealing with artifact spirits though. Yeah, it's quite a bit of history, but you never know. Culprit could be anywhere, really, right? Uh-huh. That's the point. We need to find somewhere to go at this point, because Raymond's intuition has kind of failed her hardcore. So, yeah, that's what we're going to do. So, this stage, this stage, uh, it has three sort of separate parts to it. And yes, uh, Kakaris is a... I believe it's a Kakaris? I know it's uh, the thing that uh, uh, Kogasa is, but yeah, the uh, I'm pretty sure that's what the spirit's called. So we need to head down here to progress, but we can't obviously go from this side. We need to open that back to a turn path. But there are kind of three separate sections to this stage. And most of it's not too bad, it's just there's a lot of these sorts of multi-layer passages and whatnot where you can't really get the full way around unless you go up and down stairs and flip switches and all of that fun stuff. So that's what we're going to be dealing with, we're going to get some more spare parts and have an unavoidable fight with a couple of basic fairies. Nothing too special here, uh, basic fairies, uh, well, all warrior magician style fairies and whatnot are weak to dark, so Sunai will be able to buff Satori quite nicely to deal with him with energy drain, always good. And I actually changed the staff on Patchouli, also take a shot, <laughs> that didn't last long. I um, I changed the staff on Patchouli to the Philosopher's Cane so that she can cast faster, because it's a little bit stronger than the staff that she was using. About 5 magic attack points. And you can see just how big a difference Yomu has experience-wise compared to everyone else here. Even Satori and Patchouli are slightly under-leveled for this place. I think the par level is about 18. 17 or 18 as a result. So. <laughs> Yomu's getting stupid high experience. I think that's five times experience? Looks like five times, yeah. So she will be leveling up pretty quickly to begin with here, just like Satori did before. And well, that's part of the fun of having the low level character, you know, put them in the commander spot where they're safe and everything is all good. 
Now, these uh, amaryllis, they are basically red uh, lotus plants, I guess. They cast party-wide sleep, and then they will cast a party-wide instant death on the sleeping characters. So you don't really want to be dealing too much with that, so... Yeah, weak to fire and I believe slash as well, so they shouldn't last too long. Yeah, like most plants are. And there is the sleep trying to be cast. And we have some poison if they do survive, which they do. And you see just how much damage that poison does. A simple poison art just did 294 damage to everything it hit. And it hits pretty often. So, yeah, this is where... This is what Satori is good for at the start of the game, mass status condition applying. I have a couple of points in her permanent status tree, just to amplify this a bit. I could have had Max learning, I think, but I chose the other way around here just because of how powerful the, uh, the poison will be. Now, these uh, spirit things here can cast evasion up, I believe, but since we're using a relatively heavy magic team, we shouldn't have too much to worry about there. Although Satori getting attacked doubled up into is not fun, so yeah, that kind of just happened. That's the problem with a party of this type, I guess, uh, that you do run the risk of losing stuff to double targets. Also, Reimu's attacks are now a bit cheaper than they used to be because, uh, well, I could have gone into Grove Tree stuff a bit, actually, because I did a fair bit of changing of stuff here, but Reimu has a MP cost down in her offensive growth, her, like, exorcism tree, so that's what I've focused on here. Uh, yes. So... She has uh, she has lower cost than she used to, and Yomu getting two levels here, starting off with uh, Crescent Moon Slash, which is her basic attack for the Manusa stance, and uh, also she has this because of her Growth Tree and the Katana. She can heal her own permanent status, and uh, you know with her next skill, and uh, she can heal herself a little bit. Well, no, that's with this skill, and then she heals herself with the next one. But yeah, Crescent Moon Slash, a basic attack that you will be using most of the time in Manusa. It's not too bad. Uh, single target, pretty powerful. Yeah, it does the job. So, the gimmick behind this stage is, at least with the first part, is with multiple switches that you can do stuff with. But before we do that, we need to get a box, which has some bamboo, pretty nice. And we need to not get stuck on the wall like that, because that's kind of weird. So, the way this stage works, see there's a switch there, which is going to affect a few things. But first off, we need to take on the wyvern. So, the dragons and stuff are going to get a bit more powerful, as you would expect, as we go along. They do have, I think... I, I don't know if this one can cast Tornado or if it's another one I'm thinking of, but it has some fairly nasty tricks up its sleeve. I don't think it has any particular weakness, I think it is resistant to main elements, so that's kind of a pain, but yeah, it has that, which is powerful. I think it also gets two attacks per turn, so you have to watch that as well. Ah, not always then. Sometimes some of these do have double attacks, but yeah, it's it's physicals hit for a lot, so do be mindful of that. Uh, I guess we're just gonna have to needle it down. Uh, let's just go ahead and use all the stuff because why not? Get ourselves some extra power. Hopefully, not die in one hit. Because, yeah, if it did 107 damage to my most physically defensive character, then you know that things are going to be a bit rough. And as you see, Yomi was still getting triple experience here. Uh, around about that, it's pretty great. So, there is a switch to hit, and that switch will affect a couple of things. But I first just want to show where it's going. So, this here is blocked, and... As you can obviously guess from here, or infer at the very least, this switch will make 
one side uh, blocked and the other side not so blocked. So yeah, we can now progress with that. So there's going to be a few uh, a few instances of that going through this, and uh, yeah, I wasn't avoiding that. You want to fight this thing though. The Gold Scarab, it's not too difficult to take on, but it gives you a lot of experience for this area, and it also has a good drop, which I want too. So, I maxed out Sakuya's uh, uh, weapon tree, finally. And that gives me access to Full Moon Revenge, which is a 3 hits 412 MP attack. Single target, very powerful, but I usually don't use it because it has an accuracy penalty, and that's, that often causes it to miss too much for my liking. I forget if these guys are like immune to light or whatnot, so we're going to find that out just now. Uh, let's also just raise physical attack, because why not? And I don't remember if they're weak to another element, so we'll just try that. It might be fire, or it's a bug, so probably water, but... We get poison. So these guys have got higher resistance than the uh, usual enemies that we're fighting at the moment, so they actually... Oh, it has a bomb attack? Didn't even realize that. But yeah, it has more resistance, so the poison that was inflicted does less damage. But it was still enough to actually take it out, so that is good. Uh, so we have another level for Sanai and Patchouli, and we get two attacks because two level ups on Yomu. So you can see her basic attacks for Devoloka and uh, Azura stances right there. So let's just quickly go ahead and show those off. So the Devoloka stance gets uh, a basic column attack that reduces both magic attack and magic defense, which is pretty nice. And Enlightened Sword is a small AoE move that reduce this physical attack. So you've got Manusa to reduce their defense, right? Yeah, Manusa reduces defense, Devoloka reduces magic stats, and Azura reduces physical attack. So not bad. So let's just proceed, apparently run straight into an enemy because that is exactly what we do around here. And uh, we shall go ahead buff magic attack because I'm going to use Mind Blast this turn, I think. We may as well just cast that. And fire because fire, why not? So there's evasion going up, that's probably going to be really annoying, but we've just paralyzed our entire party, so paralysis I think reduces evasion to zero, so <laughs> that evasion buff does absolutely nothing. So we can just poke them to death from here. Don't worry with Sanai's weapon, by the way. I know I'm still using the Abika Cherry Blossom. There's nothing else I want to give her right now. So she will get some a weapon soon. I'm hoping to get a particular drop from this stage that I'll be giving her. So, up here, another box with a Hinatoi Feather for Mogo. And... Well, yeah, we just have to proceed along the designated pathways and uh, just make sure that we don't miss any tricks going on, going across here. So you see, there's a couple of ways that we can get through to this bit. There's a way down the bottom that we'll be going fairly soon, but before we do that, you can't get that box. But you do want to head down here and just generally explore the area. Like, there's a few ways that you can go about doing that, but yeah, you, you generally just want to explore these places and uh, make sure that you're not missing stuff, because if you miss stuff then you will be sad about the stuff that you have missed. This is a public service announcement from Cal apparently. Okay, so, this is getting kind of close to the second half and we see a different enemy type here. I don't remember if these guys are immune to physical, I don't think they are. I'm pretty sure they're weak to fire though, so we'll use fire against them. Although actually they're... Yeah, they are, but I was gonna say it might not make sense for them to be weak to fire, but they are. And poison inflicted on three, that's quite nice. Tori unfortunately died in the process, but... They're not weak to light, which is weird, but oh well, they, they kind of just got wrecked. So, yeah, that's that's those guys in a nutshell. Yomu gets even more levels, and Story gets a power level, which is quite nice. Uh, 
Also another silver tray, so more Sakio stuff, which is good. And then we have the regular scarabs here at all. So that's not bad, we get to show everything off here. I'm just gonna call them attack them, I think, and buff that. Probably go for the Mind Blast Paralysis here, and let's try Earth. I could just look up what the weaknesses are, but... See how freaking good Satori's attack stuff is, though, like... Mass Paralysis, though, it's not always needed, especially if you set your party up for, like, the one-shot kill, like I'm pretty much doing here. But... It's really, really nice to have that level of power on Satori, where she can just immobilize half the enemies in one go. Mind Blast is such a good move, and I think my controller is like being a bit weird here. Uh, yeah, it's. I mean, it's not too bad, but I'm like running into walls and stuff that I really shouldn't be with with this. Oh well. Uh, yeah, you can also see I've managed to get. Sanai's uh, buff tree maxed, so now she has half magic costs on that stuff, which is really nice. So she doesn't have to worry quite so much now about killing uh, killing her MP. Always good. So yeah, ultimate division takes care of them, the poison will take care of these guys, hopefully. Yep, there we go. It's a bit weird how the poison kill. I mean, if a, if poison kills enemies in between turns, then the first person in your formation takes all the credit, which is kind of weird. But you know, I guess it's just the default in between turn action that uh, that's the game decides to take. Wow, I was not getting out of that one. Uh, do I want to just vanilla physical this? Can I get away with vanilla physical this fight? Let's find out. I mean, I might be able to, but my party's not the strongest physically, so... Also, kind of weird to see Patchouli acting first, you know. I know I have faster casting, but that doesn't mean that she is physically faster than ever. I think the reason she's acting first is because I have the Squall Hairpin on her at the moment. So she has plus 15 speed compared to everybody else. And we see the other benefit of Yomu here, the Yukari Slash. So Yomu has one move that she can use without any stance whatsoever, and that is the Yukari Slash. Yes, yeah, Slash it easy indeed. Bit of a spoiler for what's coming up, but yes, unfortunately Yukaris are in this game, and they kind of work like the metal slimes of, uh, of other games. They, uh, they have their own thing and you kind of just have to deal with said thing. Basically, they, they're just about immune to attacks, but they have um, they have a nice ability of giving you tons of experience if you do manage to kill them. Yeah, that is unfortunately the thing that happens with Speedy Flight. You, uh, they get faster, they get evasion, and they get perfect dodge, which is just sucky all around. So, yeah. But they're not resistant to magic, so they just get their butts kicked by that, and they give us the accessory they have as well. Happy days. So Yomu gets her first power, and we get the pocket watch. A neat little accessory, which uh, will give you some resistance to any type of quick status. This is negative only, as far as I'm aware, so it doesn't stop your positive quick status stuff like uh, covers and whatnot. But yes, any quick status like daze, burn, paralysis, uh, not paralysis, uh, shock, stuff like that can get blocked by this thing. It's actually pretty powerful. I'm going to run from this fight because I'm kind of running a little bit low on MP and I don't really fancy doing all the fights here because I kind of I'll probably just like end it the part when I'm out of MP pretty much so yeah just going on through stuff this is kind of the second third of the place and you can see there's a few ways to go you can tell it's another new area because we have some new enemies so this guy one eye boy I believe if you attack it with physicals it will counter attack with a petrified based attack 
And Black Pudding is the upgraded slime, so they're very resistant to physicals, but weak to water and fire. Likewise, uh, water is a weakness for this guy. And maybe light as well, we'll find that out in a sec. And uh, yeah, I'll just cast on everyone. I do want to have a resistance buff here because uh, these guys can be kind of nasty with that stuff. So yeah, don't want to get caught by all of the status here. Oh, they're not weak to water, okay. You see there was a resistance down cast there, unfortunately. And uh, only the slime got poisoned, heck yeah. Which then just promptly died anyway. So, alright, fun times. Yeah, so they counter with a paralysis based, uh, not paralysis, petrification based stare. So just make sure that you cast a res buff and you'll be fine. That can, I mean, that can be said for an awful lot of enemies in this game. If you have a res buff active, then they're, uh, they're really not as big a deal, you know? A lot of enemies have nasty status conditions on their vanilla physical attacks, and you can nullify that with Sunai's res buff. Uh, it cannot be overstated just how good Sunai is. Really, really can't be. Anyway, there's a box up here, so we'll get that. Magic medal, very nice. And you can see there's a fair number of enemies here, including some panzer tanks. Because, uh, sorry, panther tanks. Panther panzers. Because why not, right? Pretty sure they're weak to fire, so probably be using fire in this one. Um, I can hit everything with the amulet, it's a little bit better. Uh, we'll just magic buff and not just basic physical attack. Thank you very much, I was kind of pressing buttons too quick there. So yeah, we'll buff up power and uh, go from there. Because everything is weak to fire, so why not? So, ooh, wow, that main cannon just kind of wrecked everyone there. Uh, ouch. It hits a fairly wide spread, so it, it was... Ooh, nice. It was targeting Sanai, and therefore everybody got hit. Because it's a wide AoE, as we've seen in the past before. But that's fine, because Sakia can clean up house no problem. And we get ourselves the... I... I'm gonna butcher this so hardcore, but I think it's the uh, Dakimakura, is how I would say it anyway. It's another all blocking shield, as indicated by the A there. Uh, only 10% chance to block everything, but it, uh, as, as you can see by it going off the screen there, it can block every type of attack. So it's an upgrade to the pot lid from before. So just going on further down here, and uh, I'm looking basically to open up that way back to the start. And uh, once we're done with that, I will probably end the part there. Although everybody's getting quite low on MP, so we may not get that far. Uh, luckily, Patchouli can kind of go on for quite a while, so... We should be okay for a little bit. Anyway, these tires can use Hit and Run, which is a... Uh, uh, daze based attack and that can be annoying. They're also weak to water I think which is odd but of course you can slash a tire so and apparently the panther is also weak to earth because uh, Satori's earth based attack there, a basic attack was actually effective so you know what let's test this out Yes, they are weak to earth as well, so you can use that too if you wish. They're still pretty powerful though, <laughs> and uh, yeah. Wow, Patchouli actually survived a physical attack. That's incredible. Wait, Yomu levels up again? Already level 11, so... It doesn't take too long for under level characters to get back into the swing of things here. And, well, that's just a general theme of the stuff here. As you can see, there's there's a lot of sort of dead-end areas here, but it's not too bad, right? There's, there's a lot of ways you can go, but you also don't have to explore all of them. That didn't really make much, much sense at all, but yeah, most of them lead to, like, treasures and stuff, which are... Nice, but not always essential. So, 
This guy. Uh, this guy. I don't remember if it's instant death or control that it inflicts with its basic attack. It might be instant death and then it zombifies you or something. I don't remember because I thought zombification was only on a couple of uh, enemies. But regardless, it can do some nasty stuff, so I'm gonna res buff that. And um, probably poison art because. Poison, I don't know. I don't remember if it's weak to a core element, it's probably fire if it is. Because apparently zombies can burn. There we go, fire is a good weakness. And it gets two attacks per turn. That's a thing. But it's weak to both light and fire, so... Good times on that. Let's just go ahead and heal Satori because she is about to die. That would not be very good. It's very resistant to dark, so energy drain is not good here. Which is a bit of a shame. And there we go. So it's one of the sort of mini boss style monsters. It's not too bad by itself, so that's fine. Also, the switch in the middle will, as you would expect, again trigger the uh, the flip of this, which is good, so we can explore a bit further. But I think that's roughly where we're going to leave it for this part, because we can get back to the start by going up this way. And there's a few other places I didn't even get to explore yet, and I'm pretty sure I'm missing a box in the top half. Also, donation box there if you want. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm missing a box. Uh, somewhere up the top left corner of the place. So... Yeah, next time we're going to go ahead and take care of that. But for now, this has been Game of Cow playing Toho, the genius of Sapphos. And next time, we go deeper into Muenzuka and see if we can find the reasoning behind the, the tires. Oh wait, sorry, we were trying to check some sort of our instant, weren't we? Oh well, the, the, the reason behind the tires' existence is more important.